You'll get all the little pop up now. John, can you also enable transcriptions? I sure can, I think. I can record. Enable. There we go. Thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to January 25th version of the Chaos Community Call. I'm Elizabeth. I'm the Chaos Community Manager. Yay. So welcome, welcome. Happy to see everybody here. It's really good to see all your faces and your avatars, pictures, whatever. Um, welcome to Justin, who is new and visiting us. We're really happy to see you, Justin. Um, oh, he's even going to share. Thanks, Sean. Well, like above and beyond. Well, it's easy. And then it's harder to it's harder to share and take notes when you're facilitating. I think it is. It is. I cannot uh, multitask whatsoever. I yeah. absolutely. Me neither. I appreciate you, Sean. You're awesome. Um, if you've not added your name to the agenda, please do so if you feel like it. If you don't, also fine. And just to reiterate, as we always do, totally fine to have your camera off, especially if you're in a pub. Um, some of us are having a good time while they're at the meeting, which is amazing. So <laughs> it's really fantastic. Um, might be a, a theme for a future community call, I think. Anyway, um, OK, let's hop right on into the agenda. Um, First is, I just wanted to uh, make sure we, everybody knows when the next release is, because it does kind of sneak up on us sometimes. Um, I'm assuming Kevin clarified that for me. I asked the question on the agenda, and Kevin already filled it in. So um, Kevin, do you have any other comments besides what's here in the agenda, or we can all just read when the next release uh, cycle will be? No, it's, it's really just what's there. And just to be, we need to always be aware of the translation team in the the work and the changes that we're doing. Uh, so we need to make sure that we we keep informing them what, what we're doing and, and keep them engaged. What specifically is being released? I'm sorry? What specifically is being released? So we, we release metrics uh, definitions, uh, and we release those on a, on a six-month cycle. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so the the the, the, the use, utility of the definitions is that we may not have the right definition for everything, but we have a consistent one that helps people draw comparisons consistently. Um, Kevin, is there anything that's going to be different? So with the release cycle, obviously we have the new metrics, but this time around, I think we're going to start seeing some metrics that have been revised because they mm -hmm. were say like, two years old. You know what I mean? And they just need some some editing updates. Is there anything yep. different in the process that we need to know about? Uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, uh, metrics revisions do not need to go through the full review process. Uh, if if it, however, if substantial revisions are made to the metric, in that uh, the, the revisions kind of change what the metric is, uh, then it does need to go through the, the review process. And that is up to that is up to each working group to determine. So if they if they make substantial changes to the the, the metric uh, and they feel it needs to go through the review process, then they should treat it as a then they should treat it as such. Uh, mm -hmm. However, if we're if they're just doing copy edits and adding a few links in uh, kind of the, the general, uh, 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 kind of the, the reverview review process that we've outlined, then it doesn't necessarily need to go through the full review process. However, we do need to let the translation team know that the documents were edited. I, I did just add a link that provides okay. criteria from the community handbook for when a revision to a metric needs to go through the review process. And by the way, just for uh, just for everyone on the call who may be new, so we we do have a it is a six month cycle where we where we release metrics, uh, and the process for that includes a thirty day public comment review period. Uh, so once it goes through that thirty day public comment review period, we then uh, release the metric and we release it in the form of a of a PDF. That, that captures all of the, the metrics definitions that, that chaos has uh, defined to that date. Uh, 
Now, as we as we continue on, uh, these these documents are they're living documents, so they can continue to be edited. So the the review, or I'm sorry, the release is really kind of a snapshot in time uh, at that six month cycle. Now, to uh, to clarify what Matt was asking, uh, and I know he, he talked about it a little bit. Uh, what we're doing this year is something that we haven't done in the past, and it's not really it's not part of the review process. But we're we're actually going back and we're looking at all of the metrics that we had defined previously, and we're we're kind of looking at it as an eye with an eye to to see how those metrics are holding up, to make sure that we're using consistent language and to kind of uh, refresh them if need be. So this is outside of our normal uh, review and release policy. And that's the, so what we're talking about is the, how do we, how do we decide if we're just editing to make these metrics, uh, to keep these metrics up to date? And how do we decide if these metrics need to actually go back through the review process? Uh, sorry if that was wordy. No, nope, that explained it quite clearly. I think, uh, and the and the point I just made is that it's, it's up to the working group to determine if that metric needs to go back through the the full review process. And if it does, what would happen is that metric would uh, work on that metric would freeze in March, uh, and it would uh, it would go through the, the the full thirty month review period, and then it would be released in April as part of our full metrics release. Anyone have questions for Kevin or any of us on this process or timing? So again, when is the date for the next release? <laughs> April. April, okay. And they'll freeze in March. So is that March 31st or? March. March, March, okay, March, March, March first is the is the freeze date, right? Okay, so, March first is the freeze. So the, the entire That's, the entire no, month of right. March is the review period, and then early April is the date for the release. And generally, we we target that for the first week of April, uh, with the idea that the translated metrics release would be released the following week or the week after that. Got it. Uh, so in that 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 first week of April, it also gives the working groups about a week to make any changes that they need to make to the metric prior to the release, based on comments that they received during the review period. So we have about five-ish weeks. I don't know get the calendar, but I'm guessing about five weeks, six weeks before the freeze. So um, that means for some working groups, maybe only a couple more meetings. Um, so I guess the, the ask, I hate that. I guess the request is to um, finish up any lingering uh, metrics that are hanging out there the best you can. Yeah, and his, historically, because of the holidays, this uh, release period is not as uh, productive as the, the next one. So which and that's and that's completely fine. Uh, I guess because because we are right now kind of going back and looking at all of our our other metrics. Uh, 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 in in my mind, that seems to be a, a a more important thing to do right now than than pushing through new metrics that may uh, in in a hurry <laughs> to get them to the date. So. Awesome. All right. Any other final questions before we move on? I have no more. All right, let's go on. Uh, the next item is just a bit of housekeeping. Um, I did hear from Yahoi and they have decided, so if you watch the recording of the last Asia Pacific community meeting, we, we talk about the next meeting. <laughs> we say, yeah, we're gonna go for it. But I heard from Yahoi yesterday that they had chatted um, amongst themselves on the Chinese community and decided to go ahead and just cancel tomorrow's meeting. Um, so the next time that group's gonna meet is on February 23rd. And that'll be on the chaos calendar if anyone is interested in joining. Okay. 
That's a really good meeting for thinking about metrics models and, and how people actually use metrics in practice. So that one in the metric model meeting that's every other Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central Time. Agreed. Agreed. <clears throat> okay. Um, the next one is uh, an idea that I had to do a community mural. And I want to get everyone's opinion and let you know that we're going to try to do this if we can pull it off. Um, so as you know, chaos is turning five this year. Um, and so I thought it would be kind of fun to get everybody's, um, <clears throat> get a, a picture of everyone, um, just a quick selfie, or um, it could be a picture of your dog or cat or pet, <clears throat> excuse me, or, you know, something where like where you live, I don't know, like a piece of artwork that you did, anything, any kind of picture or contribution you want to make, and we'll put them all together in a big mural and use it, <clears throat> excuse me, goodness, somewhere on the site. So, I, I, I added a picture of a fish from the Seattle Aquarium and our Chaos Con photo. Hey, nice. Okay, awesome. And as Sophia asks in the chat, um, yes, you could do a selfie with all of your pets if you want to. <laughs> um, I will send out a more formal request to the mailing list um, with the like guidelines of, <clears throat> you know, like <clears throat> there's the drive and um, like what, you know, file formats and all of that stuff are. So, um, but I just wanted to kind of give everyone's a heads up. I'm going to try to do this um, relatively soon. Um, so if you can get me that information by the end of January would be fantastic. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to go in a big mural. So, you know, your picture will be small in comparison. So don't worry about your hair or anything like that. So, <laughs> I don't. Or, <laughs> or not hair. Son. Yes. <laughs> your makeup's on. You don't have to worry about yeah. that or anything. So, um, so I anyway. Really good one. I, I, Sean, I have one with you and me on the aircraft carrier deck at like. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a cool one, actually. Yeah, I'm try, I got to try to find that one. <laughs> I, I have it somewhere if you can't find it. All right. That's it awesome. might be your camera, actually. It might yeah, have been. It, it might have been, yeah. I, I definitely have, like, I have pictures of all, I have a photo history of all of this. So I think Mike Dolan yeah. took it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, think about it. Um, it right now it's pretty flexible uh, as far as the size goes. If I need to, I need to sort out how it's going to look. But um, but yeah, so that should be pretty fun. Anybody It'd be have great to add it to the web page too? Because that'd be just a really nice picture. So yeah, yeah, I think it would be fun. And you can also it could be past or current con contributors like if you're watching this and you haven't been around for a while totally fine like it's you know any anybody who's been involved in chaos from the beginning we would love to have some kind of representation from you so um yeah does anybody have questions on that like i said i'll send a, a more formal thing through the mailing list all right cool. that sounds good I, i'm i think it's a really cool idea yeah it should be fun um all right, I see the next item on our list says random idea. I'm guessing that Matt G probably put this on here because that seems like a Matt G thing. Yeah, that was me. So I was just thinking, um, so this is, and Don, you're on the call so you can just listen in. I think Don's still there, yeah. Um, still here. Okay, so with the, the common working group meeting, we have obviously the metrics that we work on, but my thought is, is what if we also use that meeting um, for things that like kind of operations that occur across the chaos project. So for example, um, I was thinking about like, we have a new label that we want to use for updating metrics, or we have, um, this data use awareness statement that we want to kind of think about across the chaos project. The answer could be totally no here. And the only reason that I thought of this is because in the DEI working group, we develop metrics around DEI, but we also take time to talk about like the, D, the uh, DEI event badging program, which is not necessarily obviously metrics development. So it's just a thought of consolidating work in, in one group. And again, the answer could be no. I yeah. think that makes sense. I mean, we started the common working group really to handle cross-cutting things that cut across the whole the whole community with the idea of you know thinking about it as as metrics but i think for some of the things that you described i think it totally makes sense to have the common um, group handle some of those 
Okay. And just FYI, Elizabeth's fuse blew and she disappeared because of a power outage. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> just just so nobody's waiting around for her to facilitate the rest of the agenda. <laughs> um, so I, I yeah. like the, uh, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Kevin. I was, I was just going to say, I like the idea as well. Uh, I think uh, as a community, we're getting a little uh, Zoom call heavy. Uh, so any, anything we can do to keep the number of Zoom calls we have at a, at a manageable number. That was it. So it was like, uh, it was the phrase of like overloading yeah. a working group versus overloading meetings. Like I, <laughs> I was of... planning on going to that operations meeting, but I was also kind of dreading adding another Zoom call to my calendar. So yeah, and um, I thought it on too... common would be better. And like in, in DEI, it's not like we spend the entire time talking about the badging program. And same with common. It's not like we'd spend the entire time thinking about cross cutting things. So, okay. Yeah. I also feel like we have kind of the right set of people in the common working group typically to address things like this. So, you know, okay. Kevin's there most of the time, you know, Matt and Sean, I, I feel like we have kind of the right set of people anyways. And plus one to Kevin's like not adding one more meeting. Okay. Um, right on. Well, I'll, I'll kind of bring this up in Slack then. And Yash, I know you're on. This would be a meeting that would be like for the operations team would probably be a good one to attend and Ritik also attending that yeah, one as well. I don't know. Okay. Yash, it's at 10, 10 US Central. You can find it. And check up. Okay. And check up the parts. Okay, cool. Thanks, Yash. And if it doesn't work for people, we can always we can always adjust the time. I mean, we yeah. set the time for the for the common working group ages ago. And if there are people who need to attend who aren't available, we can we can make some adjustments, I'm sure. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had a oh. heater going because it's freezing here and I blew a fuse and everything is, yeah. So I'll go fix that after the meeting, but um, not too much partying from the Bengals. Yeah, as said. <laughs> that was my theory. <laughs> Although, there's there's going to be a lot this weekend. I can yeah. anyway. <laughs> Yay! It feels like 1988 all over again. Yeah. Anyway, um, okay. So now I have to look at this little tiny screen and figure out where we are. Uh, we're on five. Boston talk, Matt. You want to mention that? Yeah. So I just wanted to mention that we got invited. So over the last year, we've been, uh, as you know, we've been doing a DEI reflection with respect to the chaos project. Things that we can improve to make the project more inclusive. Um, and kind of our, our next step is how do we implement, continue to implement uh, some of these uh, recommendations as well as how can we make these recommendations available to other communities that may be looking to improve DEI within their own projects. And we were invited to give a FOSDEM talk. Uh, it's part of the, do you remember what it's part of, Elizabeth? Uh, open source the, design. Uh, design track. Yep. Open source design room track. Um, and so we're recording that probably tomorrow, and that's the time that it is. And I think it's February 6th. So I just wanted to keep people posted that we are doing that presentation. And I'm also going to be, uh, I have a blog post written that I'll probably publish in like today, tomorrow, sometime. Um, so if anybody's curious how that went and hasn't been in the, in these meetings or has just kind of tuned it out, um, it'll all be there in a nice little blog post for you to read at your Yay. leisure. So, all right. Uh, okay. Any other questions, comments, anything else? Okay. Um, so, uh, we did have a couple of things from last week, um, some loose ends that we will tie up. Wow. We are really making good time. Okay. Um, then the first one on here is a reminder, oh yeah, to fill out this poll. So we decided we wanted to um, give ourselves a name, like, uh, you know, people who, who use Golang call themselves gophers, for instance. So we wanted to kind of give ourselves a fun name and we had never done that before. So there's a poll and you can take that until January 31st, we'll close it up. And then that's what we're going to be. Um, and if you look, we do have a, 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 a front runner. So if you don't like the front runner, you should vote today. Or if you do like the front runner, you should go and, and solidify the lead, I guess. Um, so please do that if you feel like it, we would love it. 
Um, the next item on here says data use awareness statement, and this is going to be going into all of the uh, metrics, past and present and future. So um, is someone who worked on this want to talk about that a little? Lucas has been spearheading it, but I don't see on the call right now. Uh, I don't think so. No, it's funny because we're actually talking on Slack right now about this doc, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess he's not in the meeting today. Um, so I had taken on as an action item to kind of restart this work to see if we could move it forward. Um, we we're kind of in a bit of a discussion of how we evolve it because I think he has a pretty good outline here. Um, right now, the doc that's linked is really it kind of hits like three parts in that it's sort of a guidance for both the metrics creators and potential implementers and users. Um, and so I think part of me wants to make that a little bit more specific or at least make the sections that apply to one or the other, um, either more general or more specific, because um, I think it's kind of in the middle right now. So some of the recommendations might be kind of confusing. Um, the second piece of it that we're looking at is um, how much to go into specific regulations. And this is an area where we have a slight, I don't say we have a slight disagreement, but it, it's just more, again, like our, our backgrounds are coloring how we approach this. And that Lucas was really interested in trying to say catalog a number of regional regulations that could potentially come into play and in, in, in accordance to say PII retention and usage, depending on what you're doing and who you are. Um, for me, just in my own experience with this there's so much context here that's hard like i just don't feel comfortable with any sort of legal recommendation or analysis as a non-lawyer so we're trying to figure out what's what's the balance here to say be helpful but not essentially overstate our own expertise here um because that can be particularly tricky when we talk about legal issues uh, we don't want to be the responsible of anyone getting sued because we told them to do x y and z um so we're trying to find a balance there of both being helpful but not too prescriptive. Um, and so we're working on what that list might be. And so right now what we've settled on is trying to enumerate as many things that we come up with and then encourage more just community driven participation, um, things that we don't know about. There's potentially legal um, developments happening in country right now around how PII is used, depending on where you live in the world. So this yeah. is something I think is going to constantly evolve. And I think the biggest, the trickiest part, at least that I face from my own perspective, working from a large company that's very sensitive around data usage handling because of, well, various lawsuits. And I can say that because that's all public. Um, it's just that we we don't necessarily know how this is going to be applied to open source because we don't, we haven't really seen precedent set. and. There's sort of like this, well, we should be conservative and just assume that eventually it will be a problem. So essentially, we're trying to address this in a way that's um, in line with improving how people think about and use our metrics and implement them um, without being too prescriptive. So I would say that we've made some progress, but we're still working on it. Um, I think we had the data disclaimer statement that I think that one we were fairly comfortable with at this point. Um, if you did want to have that sort of leading into the metrics, and this would just be the citing doc, um, and we're working on sort of the, the long tail of that. So that's the general update is that we're working on it. It's not done. <laughs> um, but if we maybe want to time it to, I would love to have this done by the release, um, just because I think that would be a nice thing to include in the release. Does that kind of timeline make sense for folks? Yeah. It does. Um, so I, I know that we talked about this last time. So thanks for the update. Um, so there's the statement that's in the metrics themselves, right? That already exists. We have that. And so um, I can pull up that template. So this document that you're working on with Lucas, where would this go? Somewhere central. Okay, so we like maybe in the governance in the governance repo or something like that. Um, let me let me put this yeah. at the top of just like just to make the notes self-contained. Okay, and I think it would go in the uh, community the community repo. Okay. But the uh, the the statement that we have currently in the metrics would actually link to this document. So I right now that. there's a, a placeholder right. link and it would connect to this document. Okay. Um. Sophia, I have a quick question. 
So is there, um, to your knowledge, a central place that keeps track of the regulations that we could just reference instead of us trying to keep track of re regulations for every region on the earth? Not that I've come across. Okay. Um, what, what I've been trying to find are any times that others have written about this. <laughs> Um, so like we've couple come up with a couple of like say Linux Foundation examples where they've written a report on how export laws can impact open source projects and sh data and sharing between various countries. So resources like that that are just available to the community, we've tried to collect them, but I haven't really seen it. I think it's data policy and regulation is currently an area of development, I would say, within various governmental entities. So I don't think there is a canonical list, honestly. Um, I mean, there might be within a company that's maintaining it, but not a public version that I've seen. If someone else has seen one, I'd love to know, because <laughs> that would maybe reduce some of the work that we're pulling together. But I mean, the Electronic Frontier Foundation has a standard data privacy statement. But I, no, I have a I'm not sure that you're going to really find anything specifically like that. I mean, I think I think what we should focus on for our data use awareness statement is the things that people need to think about. Yeah. And they need to think about those in the context of, you know, whatever legal environment they're operating in. But Sophia, you make a really good point. Like we don't want to be in the business of providing legal advice. No. But we want people thinking, at least thinking about the right things and applying them in the, you know, whatever legal environment they're in. And to be clear, we aren't actually holding any data as a project, really. We do, but we have our own privacy statement regarding right. how we handle it. That's okay. Yeah. And I, I'm going to link to that in this as an example. And basically, I think the, the core recommendation is if you are collecting things beyond what is known in from the user, say like your GitHub activity, you're opting into that already. But if you're, say, collecting beyond that or using it beyond that in a public forum, then the recommendation is you should have a data privacy or policy or handling statement just because this is something that wasn't happening before. So that, again, that's like a, a contextually driven recommendation, not you have to have it, but you should have it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I guess a question that I have for the group is, as we were working on this, part of me was wondering, have other, are there other pockets in the broader open source ecosystem that are thinking about this? Um, like, I feel like for me, I've been following Nikki Stevens' work around the Open Demographics Project, um, because that, that for her was a lot about classification around personal data, but in a, like, in a public standard way versus Again, a lot of these classifications are dictated by companies or organizations. So I was just kind of curious if we as a community should be trying to loop in others within the broader open source space that have already started working on things like this. I was wow, I was just I was just thinking that exact same thing with the with the open demographics. I was uh, I was wondering if if maybe if maybe this isn't kind of a another open source project or maybe we should uh build build this in a, a repo outside of chaos and see if we can pull in some outside collaboration there and then just link to it the same way that we we link to the the open demographic stuff mm -hmm. i think it's a possibility Okay, so um, just on this too. So I put the metrics template in there. Sean, can you click on that? Mm -hmm. Metrics template. Yeah. Okay, so if you scroll down right below implementation, mm -hmm. there's that. Stop. This one here? Nope. It says just right below implement. It's just at the top of the screen now. The usage and dissemination of health metrics may lead to privacy violations. So Kevin, the suggestion is, is that once the data use awareness statement is done, then that statement would live in the community repo. And it would 
this paragraph would be replaced by a link to that document. Well, is that correct? The link, the, link, the, uh, the link is already there. So that chaos data ethics okay. document, that's the yeah. link. So would we still keep all of the text? I think we could we could make it smaller. Uh, okay. I think we do need one or two sentences for context. Okay. Uh, but we could we could simplify that statement for sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, I can I I tell you what I'll read the statement and I know exactly what is being said in in all the ways I think I need to know it. Then then maybe we. So leave I mean it I don't think you need to shorten that. it. I don't think you need to shorten it. Okay. okay. Can we just add we just need to add the connect that link that's there now to the uh the one that yep. we would uh that we would create gotcha okay um, cool and then and so the idea would be that yeah. that Sorry, link, now it goes nowhere basically. and that if that could be done prior to the next release to sophia's point then that would just link to that thing okay and perhaps yeah perhaps that document can live in the community repo or perhaps we we put it in the community repo and fork it into a a new repo and and invite others to join us. Uh, we might. Uh, I don't know if it would be. I don't know if we'd get more people interested in it if it was its own. Uh, if we if we did it outside of chaos. I don't know. I put in the chat personally. I'd like to just keep it in the chaos project. Makes more sense to me than starting another open source project. Yes. Okay. All in favor. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in favor of keeping it in chaos, but I feel like the more that I look at Nikki Stevens's work, I kind of just want to reach out to them and ask. Just like, hey, would yeah. you be open to being a reviewer or consulted on this? Because clearly you've put a lot of thought into this. For um, sure. Yeah, and, I mean, if, yeah, if there's a generalized instrument that we can just reference that feels like open sourcey to me, so the library we import into our documentation in a sense. I mean, if, if we were if we were able to create a uh, kind of an, an exemplar uh, for other projects to use, that would be pretty amazing. So uh, well, their, their project is focused mostly on just demographics, but the right. definition within demographics are all basically the criteria you would use in PII classifications. Um, so it's it is related and in their website, they have um sort of like additional areas like standard data template but like and ethics concerns and so there's indications that it would be connected to what we're trying to create but that area was not pursued yet um or maybe they've changed focus and are working on something else like there are very re reasons why this wouldn't be currently and actively developed but um i actually have a personal connection as in like i'm one step removed from them so I might just go out and try to say hello and <laughs> just like, yeah. I don't know, I just, I feel like this is such a big topic. I feel like there's a lot of hubris to think that I could do this on my own and I'm not even doing it on my own, but like the more people involved in it, the more I'd feel comfortable with something like this. For what it's worth, Georg and I are actually maintainers on the repo, the open demographics repo. Oh, so I didn't realize that. Yeah. So we had been working with her prior just because we had come to her to her work um prior not for this reason but for the for demographics just to help us understand uh demographics and so we offered to help as well there so there is some history that's really good to know thanks for that All right, well, we have 12 minutes left. Um, we can use this time for something that's been burning on your minds, or we can release you back to the wild and give you your 12 minutes back. Just an update, I guess, risk meeting timings are changed. Uh, yeah, risk, We because of my teaching schedule, risk is gonna be at 1 p.m. this Thursday, and it'll continue on that cadence to avoid uh, conflicts okay. with others as well so maybe we update the calendar if someone think, who has access i think i already did okay. i'm almost certain i did 
I don't know. I would flip to my calendar here, but I'm sharing my screen. <laughs> I'll take a look. Yeah, you did change it. And it's it's changing uh, weekly cadence as well. Like it, yeah, so okay. and that's to avoid conflicts with other people who have different other every other week meeting meetings cadence at one central on Thursday. Okay. So. Okay, great. I will. Um, do you want, are you going to announce that on the mailing list, or do you want me to could, do that? Could you? Sure. Um, yeah, there's been a, yeah the the people who participate a lot have circulated it. I, I had no voice last week, and there were a couple of people with conflicts, and so we just pivoted. Okay, great. I will make that announcement as well. Thank you, Elizabeth. You are welcome. Uh, what else? Any other housekeeping things? Something else we need to bring up or talk about? We got 10 minutes. It's pretty good. I, I'm okay good. giving the time back to people every once in a while. That's not a terrible thing. I'm all good. All right, then. Let's do that. Thanks, everybody. We Thanks, will everyone. See again next week, if not sooner. Have a good one. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye all.